What is up guys and welcome to another stream of Developer Habits. My name is Ketmar, I'm a full stack engineer from Estonia and also the creator of Developer Habits. And today we are going to continue building Developer Habits blog. Now, if you don't know what this uh, live stream session is about, then just a brief background. Um, I came up with a plan to build a blog for developer habits and as I'm constantly looking for useful ideas of what to post in this channel, uh, I thought why not combine those two, creating a blog that I'm going to need anyways and also produce something useful. So I came up with an idea to create a series of live sessions where I'm going to design the blog but also develop it. And the first week was about the first week was about designing the blog, and this week we are going to build the front end part for the blog. And initial or not eventually we are also going to uh, connect that front end part with a CMS, and well make the blog a fully functioning thing that will go live. Um, for if you don't remember what the design looked like, then I am going to share my screen now, so you could uh, have a great reminder. So this is basically what uh, uh, what the front page of the design looks like. As you can see, there is like a header, a featured article, some latest articles, featured articles, a uh, newsletter subscri subscription box uh, so I could deliver some useful content for you guys and uh, also an article page um, just the title, the author, categories, uh, hero image and uh, yeah the content itself you can share, share the uh, content and similar articles now my goal is to develop those two pages during the sessions and uh, all the missing pages for example you want to may want to uh, take a look at articles from specific categories or you may want to you know read more about developer habits than me then uh, those are the sub pages I won't be doing during the streams but uh, these two should be the biggest ones and as you can see, the design is finished. So now we are going to move on with, uh, uh, with basically developing the front end part for it. Uh, I also see already some questions in the chat and uh, Rajesh, I hope I pronounced it more or less properly. Uh, Rajesh has asked if I'm gonna open source it the codes for developer habits. To be honest, I haven't thought about it, but now that you gave me this idea, I may do so. So, uh, well, others could use it to build their blog, but also they could learn from it. And why not maybe even um, make the design more uh, customizable so that people could set it up uh, uh, as their own blog. So this is a definitely a good idea. I will think about it and uh, I will let you know it's uh, to open source this project will be really awesome and hopefully uh, beneficial to everyone. But now regarding uh, regarding uh, the, the the blog itself, um, as I said, we have the design for two main pages which we are going to design. But I'd like to go through over the uh, whole architecture of the project. So, what it's going to look like. This week we are going to focus on that part. So we have the front end, and in front end we are going to use React.js, which is well the most popular uh, front end framework at the moment. And we are going to use Gatsby.js. Now, if you haven't heard about Gatsby.js, then uh, basically it's a way for you to build your build your pages and then just serve HTML files to your uh, clients. And how it works 
is that you give Gatsby.js uh, some sources where um, during the build time it can fetch all the necessary data and it generates the pages for you. Um, and the benefit of it is that whenever someone comes to your page, they don't have to make a request uh, to the server or uh, some backend back server to get all the um, data on the page, but they just get served an HTML page that has already been uh, pre-built. Uh, the alternative to me uh, in that case was to use uh, Next.js, which is a um, SSR library uh, or framework, for, uh, yeah, uh, framework for React.js. And there I could, well, basically write server and uh, front-end codes uh, in one framework, but it would still mean that uh, whenever someone visits the page, the request would have to be made to the server, the server builds the page, and then we uh, return uh, the built page. Uh, by using Gatsby, that's not necessary. All the pages are already built. And I'm gonna go over through the main concepts once more. Uh, once the front-end part is ready, using Gatsby and React, we are going to have back-end, uh, which we are going to develop next week. And back-end will be based on Strapi CMS. Now, if you don't know Strapi CMS, then it's a headless, no JS based CMS. And for those who don't know what headless CMS is, then um, it's basically a CMS that, uh, that gives you all the admin interface to manage the content and everything, but it won't take care of the template, template part. So you would have to build your own template rendering and uh, headless CMS just gives you the API to uh, talk to it or to communicate with it. And in the end, the backend and frontend will be connected using GraphQL. Uh, Strapi already makes heavy use of GraphQL and they will uh, provide me with all the necessary tools. And as I've read, Gatsby.js also relies heavily on GraphQL. Um, now, to be said, I have worked with Strapi CMS before, but I haven't worked with Gatsby before. Well, actually I'm lying. I have done a really simple boilerplate uh, project using Gatsby.js, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I will be learning during this process. So if you are following along, then you basically get to see how developers uh, learn and build on the go. Um, so a bit more about Gatsby.js, just to give you a visualization how the process uh, when you use Gatsby looks like. So on their website, gatsbyjs.org, they have really nicely brought, uh, brought out how Gatsby works. Basically, you have the data sources, uh, which can be CMSs, some markdown pages, or just uh, whatever data you have. It can just be a JSON also. Then, uh, you build your pages and Gatsby.js will just grab all the information from the data sources and build the pages for you. And what you get, you get a HTML, CSS and React that you can deploy to wherever you want to and serve the pages. And we are going to check out, uh, we are going, definitely going to check how this process looks like. And uh, regarding the headless CMS definition, uh, Rajesh also uh, commented that headless CMS provides RESTful API for content to display, display on any device. So yeah, basically you have this one uh, content management system and you build up the uh, um, presentational part of it, how you want to uh, serve the content to clients. Uh, in web, it can be or uh, some React React template or React project. In mobile, it can be a mobile application that fetches information from your headless CMS and so on. Uh, headless <laughs> headless CMS. Just to uh, maybe we get a really nice graph from somewhere. So yeah, uh, basically headless CMS gives you the backend. Uh, exposes an API and you uh, use the uh, or you build the front end. Uh, unlike, for example, WordPress, 
uh, which has also the template rendering built into it, you can use WordPress as a headless CMS because it also gives you an opportunity to expose a REST API, but uh, it doesn't have to, or usually you don't, at least more pages that I have worked with don't expose API in WordPress. They make use of uh, WordPress's own template system. But anyways, now let's start building. I already have opened up the Gatsby.js documentation and here basically they have this really quick start part and I already uh, ran the npm install Gatsby Cli uh, globally and I already ran the create the new site uh, command and now basically this is where I am diving into unknown. Um, I call my project developer habits FE or front end and yeah it's an empty repository that I have to start working on now. Um, as the documentation says if I want to run the local environment I can just do Gatsby develop. Let's try it out if we can do that. Hopefully it works. If not then Awkward. Um, and the, also, yeah, the <laughs> I should have started with it. The main goal for today is to get Gatsby Chase running and build our header component. So basically, this part here. Um, meaning that we have to get uh, CSS working, or actually, I'm gonna make use of styled components um, because I worked with. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to explain it later, but uh, we're going to make use of styled components. We have to include some images, import the font, and basically that's it. Um, so, it seems like we should have a local host environment. And yay, that's Gatsby running. I'm going to open the project up. Uh, in code editor also and also if you if you see that I am not giving enough information during the stream just leave a comment um, in the chat and I will try to give answers and also you can uh, help me uh, to um, be more specific with my explanations because this uh, live streaming really helps, especially last week when we were designing, I had other YouTubers join in and they helped me to design the page and come up with better ideas. So it's definitely a nice thing to have. But uh, yeah, as you saw, we have a Gatsby page running here um, locally, development mode. And now let's see what we actually have in this Gatsby project. Now this is, this is the boilerplate that you get by running uh, Gatsby uh, new project commands. As we can see, there are like tons of uh, Gatsby related dependencies plugin manifest, offline, React Helmet, uh, Sharp file system. I don't know what most of them do, so I'm not going to try to uh, answer those. Uh, we have some Gatsby SSR file here. We will definitely look into that probably during the backend part. Gatsby node, Gatsby config. So we can see that the plugins are somehow configured in Gatsby config.js. Uh, we probably come back to this file at some point. Gatsby browser. Implement Gatsby's browser APIs in this file. Okay. And what I'm mostly interested in at the moment is the source folder and public folder. So this is, uh, let's see, let's go into the source folder. Now what Gatsby does is that it's, in that sense, it's uh, really smart. For example, if I were to create a file in pages folder, it would also create a route for me uh, with the name or with the path that uh, I have the file name with. 
So for example, uh, if I'm correct, then if I were to create a new page here, page file, and call it example page, then it should automatically create a path uh, called example page. Let's see. And that it does. If I change the title for that page, example page, yep, example page, example page. So it creates routes uh, for me. Uh, as we can see, there are also some images folder imported already uh, or used. Really nice because we also want to make use of images. Uh, there is an image component and seems like here we can see how to make use of images. Mm. Okay, but um, I'll go slowly. So let's see what's an index.js file. Uh, it's a React functional component. It has some uh, layout component, SEO component, some uh, random text here, and the image component that we briefly checked out. And this is what it renders. Uh, what's really cool is that it has live reloads. So if I do hi people, then it uh, reloads momentarily. Uh, but what I would like to check out before we start uh, looking into further is to see what does the build command actually do. So uh, Gatsby is supposed to build the pages for me that I later serve to clients. And for that, they have Gatsby build commands. Let's run it. Gatsby build. Now that should build the pages. And we should also have the example page uh, built. As you can see, it does its magic, building production JavaScript and CSS bundles. Uh, and now, yeah, building static HTML pages. Let's see, does it exist somewhere? See, and this public folder now has tons of information. Let's see if we have our example page somewhere. Yeah, example page, see, public example page, and it's a HTML file. And somewhere it should have the data also that I inserted. Yeah, see H1 example page. That's really cool. And this is what Gatsby does. You um, write your project, you fetch information from various sources, and then uh, get by running Gatsby build, it builds you the HTML pages based on everything uh, uh, that you provide to Gatsby project, like different vari various data sources and so on. And uh, and here uh, on Gatsby page, they actually say really nicely, Gatsby will perform an optimized production build for your site, generating static HTML and per route JavaScript code bundles. So it's really optimized, which is also good for SEO and well, <laughs> user experience, obviously. But now that we have tested out the uh, production part or, or building part, sorry. I'm trying to think uh, or trying to follow the chat and develop and talk uh, at the same time. <laughs> Still getting used to it. But now let's run the uh, development environment again. And uh, this week we are going to focus on the front end part, so we aren't gonna be doing much related to backend. I uh, just wanted to put it out there. So we are going to build mostly React components. But uh, I'm gonna delete this example page because I'm not gonna need it anymore. But I'd like to see what different components have they included in index.js. So firstly, they have layouts. And 
So what does this layout have? It already has layout CSS file, okay. Um, it seems like it's some um, Gatsby default CSS file. Uh, then they have the header component in, yeah, they have the header component here. Uh, some use, use static query. Um, I read from uh, Gatsby's documentation that basically static query in Gatsby is a query you can run in components. Uh, usually you would uh, run your queries inside pages, but if you want to run queries in components, then uh, they become, yeah, you have to use this use static query uh, function. Um, but other than that, it seems to me it's just a React component that has some layout related uh, elements inside of it. Uh, let's check out the, so we checked the layout and now I'd like to see the image component again. That was interesting. So how does it work? This component is built using Gatsby image to automatically serve optimized images with laser loading and reduced file sizes. The image is loaded using a used static query which allows us to load the image from directly within this component rather than having to pass the image data down from pages. Okay, this is really cool because we can just, well, query, query the image here. Uh, so this is the this is the uh, file name, I assume. And if we go inside images, then we have Gatsby astronaut PNG. And it has some max width here. Uh, let's play around with it a bit. I'm gonna change from astronaut to Gatsby icon. Does it change? Yeah, it doesn't show anything it seems. Or does it? Yeah, Gatsby icon, cool. When the Rajesh, Rajesh has also said that we can play around with the uh, GraphQL queries. So if I want to play around with GraphQL queries, then, uh, then this is the uh, place you can go to localhost 8000 GraphQL. But uh, yeah, this is, this is nice. And if you don't know much about GraphQL, then don't worry, me neither. It's my first project making use of Graph, uh, GraphQL. I did some research uh, yesterday uh, on the topic. I have the main, uh, Basically, I know the uh, main concepts, but I don't have uh, like practical experience yet. Uh, but here, yeah, GraphQL, uh, basically, you can just write a query instead of um, using REST API. Uh, you write a query uh, to fetch data from, uh, from the server. And you, uh, in theory, it should make uh, requesting uh, complex data easier because you just write one query, you get all the information you need. Uh, also, you can like manipulate uh, data using qu using queries, and there's also a subscription possibility using GraphQL. But uh, we'll get to that part next week. Anyway, it's really cool to to actually see that that uh, link also because we're probably gonna need it at some point. Uh, so, but uh, I'm gonna try import uh, the logo of developer habits uh, to the project. Let's see if I can do that and if I can display this logo. Okay, I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna make it export the image as SVG and I'd like to 
So I'm gonna have to navigate around a bit. So it's under sites. As you can see, I had tons of projects, developer habits, source, images, logo. So now we should be able to also display the logo, I hope, logo.svg. Let's see if it works. Cannot read property fluid of null. Um, maybe I cannot include SVGs as easily as that. Uh, let's try with PNG file. Because if there are differences, then I'm just going to include PNG at the moment and work the problems out myself and then later show you what I did. Because there's no point in uh, diving into like really technical parts at the moment, as I don't know myself also what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, this way I have the logo. So it's, um, the problem is that I cannot import SVG that, e that easily. Gatsp, actually I'm gonna add a to-do SVG file import. And that will be fixed by tomorrow. I'm gonna find out how to do it. But anyways, yeah, we can uh, easily import images, which is cool. And it seems to me it's just a it's just about building the pages and building the React components. So, uh, but what I would also like to do is uh, install styled components because I want to make use of styled components in this project. And um, if you don't if you don't know what styled components are, then uh, basically. Um, you can uh, write really, these are like, uh, I'd say React components where you can write CSS. So this is a, an, an example of how a styled um, anchor tag is written. So you declare a button, you write the styles you want to have, you can also uh, pass in the props and based on the properties, you can write the additional styles and uh, then just uh, use it as a normal React component. Um, and why I want to use them is firstly, it helps me to write more component-based codes uh, because each uh, element I'm going to write will be, a, in that sense, a small module or part that I would like to reuse as much as possible. And style components just uh, kind of force that way of thinking. Uh, and Rajesh said, instead of using query for logo, just set it in header component. Let's see. Just set it in header component. So, uh, instead of using query for logo, just set it in header component. So something like let's let's try it out. Can I maybe import import image uh, import logo from images logo.svg. Um, can I do it like that? Oh, yeah, I can just import it. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, but yeah, um, it seems like I understand the 
really basics. Uh, it will be just about writing React components and we will learn on the go when we need to do something. Uh, but firstly, let's get styled components working. And uh, Rajesh, thank you for the uh, tip here. So maybe they already have styled components. Yes, they already have guidelines for styled components. Uh, so what I have to do is first open, I don't want to follow a tutorial. I would like to uh, <laughs> get running as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, they, they've said it really nicely. Style components let you use actually CSS syntax inside your components. Uh, so let's install styled components dependencies. So Gatsby plugin styled components and styled components and Babel plugin styled components. Uh, let's do that. Oh, I'm working a master. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, I should make a new branch actually. And also in Gatsby config JS, we have to add plugins, Gatsby plugins style components. Let's do that also. Gatsby plugins. Mm, we don't have it yet, good. So let's follow the convention here. Uh, template literals. A great thing that JavaScript introduced to concat different strings easily together. Uh, anyways, we have the plugin now. So what else do we need to do? And basically now we should be able to use style components. Let's see, I'm gonna run the project again and I'm gonna try out uh, style components now. As I'm gonna be working with header a lot, I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna remove all the stuff I'm not using. And I'm gonna, well, make use of the header component, but I'm gonna change it completely. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, I always write uh, Tere, which means hello in Estonian. But, uh, but I guess hello world makes more sense. So this is just, just the header. I'm going to make use of the site title maybe later. So I'm going to keep it here. Uh, or hello world, Terra Malm in Estonian. So now we should have a, just a header in our project. Yes. And I'd like to try out start components now. Let's see. I'm going to import start components. Uh, I don't like double quotes. I prefer uh, uh, so Rajesh has said that whenever you change config file, you have to restart the development server. Uh, yep, which which is good to know because maybe I would have like uh, stumbled upon that problem later. But uh, I should also set up a linter. I'm gonna add a note for myself so it actually like uh, some kind of uh, check that I write uh, beautiful codes and I should make it uh, use my conventions uh, or the ones that I'm used to or let it uh, force me to write the code that the linter says uh, it seems that that's not the issue, issue at the moment but uh, I'm going to import styled from styled components. And now we should be able to write, for example, uh, let's create a 
header wrapper component and it's going to be a uh, header uh, element so it goes like styled dot html element uh, which in it, which in this case is a uh, header element so i'm gonna make it 100 percent width i'm gonna make it uh, let's see what's the height of the header so height is 108 just to make it more uh, beautiful uh, regarding numbers i'm gonna set it to height 110 pixels i'm gonna give it background color of white and basically actually i'm going to change it to black at the moment to see if it works and i'm going to give it display block actually no that's not needed at the moment and now i should be able to use header wrapper component just like that um, and to show you uh, how it works let's write some sample text and yes styled components work <laughs> beautiful now we can start uh, actually creating this component as it's supposed to be so i'm gonna create the header wrapper it's gonna take care of centering the content and uh, if we go to the page and check the grid uh, then the grid is 1440 pixels wide no 1400 pixels so our uh, header will be 100% um, height will be 110 pixels um, what else and basically that's it but the header Okay, if this is the header wrapper, then inside header wrapper, I'm gonna have header content. And that will be a div. I'm gonna ch header content. And that will have width of 100%, but it will also have a maximum width of uh, 1400 pixels. And I'm already gonna create a constants uh, GS file which will hold all the necessary uh, all the various constants that we have in the project so constant constants.js and it will just export an object export default const constant no export default and it will have well, the, what should I name it? Um, page width, and it will be 1400. I'm gonna import it, import constants, no, import constants from constants and actually I'm gonna do it like page width like that and now I have access to maximum width of the page and now this is what I really like about styled components is I can access the JavaScript variables right away and the header content should be centered horizontally so I'm gonna do a margin left auto and margin right auto. Actually, it's not gonna have any vertical margin, so I'm gonna do margin zero and auto. Uh, I'm gonna give it display flex because I'm gonna make use of flex here. And I'm also gonna ha add, hmm. No, I'm not going to add any, any padding to it at the moment. But I'm thinking that the layouts should have some kind of padding also. 
Uh, we'll go back to this part. At the moment, I'm not going to add any padding to header. So, and I also need the uh, drop shadow for my header. And for that, I'm too lazy. I'm going to use box shadow generator, which I've been doing since I was, I don't know how young. But basically, you can just visually generate the box shadows that you want to have in CSS. It's a really neat tool, really easy to use. You get the necessary code and you just paste it to your project. So, okay, I'm going to leave it as black. And I'm going to... This, the thing with um, box shadows is that it's really, really easy to abuse them. Um, my rule of thumb is that do not make box shadows uh, scream. So what I mean by that is, let's skip the opacity of back shadow, uh, box shadow one. And, oh, the box shadow should actually go to uh, had a wrapper. Yep. So see, uh, the book shadow. You, you notice right away that it's there. It's it just doesn't look good, um, and it. I I can't even explain, but it just doesn't look good. You come to the page, you see drop shadow, and you have you when you have more of those, it just becomes ugly. But if you have those really subtle, really. Um, uh, the box shadows that you can't even notice, as you can see from uh, from here. You come to the page, you see you see that it's there. It's really really soft, and it adds so much uh, value to the design. Uh, so Rajesh just said, "Do you know I didn't attend my operating system class just to learn from you?" Whoa, man, that's that's good. That's really cool. Although operating system, that sounds interesting. You can uh, let us know what what do you learn there. Because um, uh, I would, if you don't know, I was actually an exchange student in Spain, uh, where I learned computer sciences, and uh, we also had an operating systems class there. Uh, that's where I like uh, got more acquainted with uh, with command lines and Linux and Unix systems and so on. So uh, definitely a really, really cool uh, subject. And you also get to learn more about uh, computers' internals. And here, uh, sorry, I'm getting, going off topic a bit, but I'd like to recommend you a book if you want to learn, uh, if you want to learn uh, about uh, internals of computers. I hope it's that book, no? Code book. Uh, shit, I don't remember the name of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys know. I'm gonna create the note for myself. But yeah, operating system class, man. Uh, I'm, I'm honored, but also uh, you should attend your classes, maybe, I don't know. But it's really nice to have you here, Rajesh. I've already learned so much from you. And uh, it's really nice to have someone else like uh, giving guidance on how to do things. Um, anyways, the book that I was talking about, I'm going to add it as a, uh, as a, as a uh, description to this video. I think it's called code, but couldn't find it. Uh, anyways. Box shadow. So, uh, anyways, shadows keep them really light. You don't want them to scream. And now, uh, I'm gonna uh, just to show you why I have maximum width here. Uh, I'm gonna make the page width just a bit uh, uh, smaller, like 900 pixels. So you could see that the content is centered. So, 
so width 100% but the max width uh, in order for the content to be centered we also need to include header content header content huh it's still it's still not centered um, what's the width of it Oh, maximum width, it doesn't get the value from uh, from here. So page width constants. Why does it not get the value? Constants dot page width. Now it does. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I have to export them as consts like like that export const page with equals and variable name now i can access it um, more easily yep uh Rajesh said he also has computer architecture and organization subjects these are like really cool topics that um when I went to the university, I tried to uh, attend as many classes as possible, but at some point you just have to uh, think through what you want to learn and uh, how you want to learn. And in my case, I prefer learning alone. And uh, for example, computer architecture and network architecture, I remember where the subjects were, the professor just wasn't able to forward the content really easily. So I just asked him what's the, uh, what, kind of resources does he use to teach us. I grabbed the books from the libraries and taught myself. And it really depends on the person, it depends on the professor and so on, but sometimes you have to make those decisions where you, uh, where you decide how you want to consume the content. And actually me learning here at the moment uh, during the stream is also one way of consuming the content. When someone suggests uh, to do something or uh, lets me know what uh, what something means in the chat, I remember it because I am like uh, I am <laughs> doing and talking at the same time and trying to understand everything and when you give me feedback it's easier to remember it. Anyways, I'm getting off topic again. I'm just gonna... Uh, now we have the uh, content centered. I'm also gonna uh, now at the at the header content. So uh, firstly, we want to get the logo, which will come here. I'm gonna add it just as an image at the moment. Uh, so do we see the logo? Yes. And now we want this logo. Um, or actually this content to be centered. So for header wrapper, I'm gonna give, what am I going to give? I'm gonna give it display flex and align items center. Is it centered? Yes. Doesn't look that good though because there's some margin for the image. No. Display flex. But something's off. Align items, center. Um, I feel that something's off at the moment. Align items. Okay, this is uh, this is nicely aligned center now. The header content, and actually inside header content, I also want content to be aligned center. So can we, and 
from the image. Actually, I'm gonna create a. Uh, I'm gonna name the logo. Uh, logo image. The import the import the SVG, and now I'm gonna create a component called logo, and it will be a styled image. And it will, what will it get? It will get marched in zero and it will get with 100%. No, let's see. And now I'm gonna rename it to logo. Something doesn't work. Uh huh. Because well, logo image. Yeah, I definitely need linters to do add a linter. So now we have a header that's also uh, vertically and horizontally centered. So now I'm also gonna create the menu. So the menu, actually I'm going to call it menu wrapper and that will be, what will it be, a nav, a menu nav because in HTML you can have navigation elements and I'm going to have it um, with auto at the moment. In the nav we're going to have well, actually, I don't need more at the moment. So let's build a HTML structure for or JSX structure for that. We're going to have menu wrapper. And inside we're going to have UL element. And inside UL we're going to have menu item. At the moment, I'm just going to make them list items that have h pref tags inside and it's gonna be growth mindset so these are the items I'm gonna use some of my copy and pasting skills select all those lines okay that didn't go, go as smoothly as I thought. It'd be easier just to write those out. I guess you've also had those moments when you, when you just paste things instead of typing things out, although the latter would be easier. So now um, we have the navigation but uh, the navigation needs to be worked with. And now I'm gonna have, well, menu wrapper. I'm gonna style the UL inside here because menu wrapper and U its UL will always go together. So I'm gonna give some styles to it, like margin zero, list style none. Should look much better now, yes. Uh, why is it on the right side though? So let's apply header content will get justify content uh, flex start at the moment. Let's see. It seems like there is space bit or what? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm making, these are the mistakes you do when you are live streaming. <laughs> like I didn't have many wrapper inside header, conton, header conton, content. Yeah, now, now it's good. Um, so I have the UL styled. Now I would like to have um, 
the list items styled. But here I'm gonna have, actually I'm gonna do it like that. Whenever I'm gonna use menu wrapper, I'm gonna have list UL and list items inside of it. So I'm gonna just do it here. Um, and now I'm gonna style, first I'm gonna give it display inline block. So they would be um, inline, that's nice. Then they need to have some uh, uh, font size, what, and actually font color and everything. So I need to I need to check the properties of the font. So the font size is eighteen pixels. Um, I'm gonna make use of REMs uh, for font size. So Basically, um, REM means that it's gonna calculate the font size based on uh, based on the default HTML uh, font size. And by default, browsers have uh, a browser or a font size of 16 pixels. So if I want to calculate uh, how much should be the value of REMs be if the font size needs to be 18 pixels, then I have to do the calculation of 18 divided by 16. And this is uh, what my font size will be if I want it to be 18 pixels. So 1.125, yep, REM. Um, and in theory, if I change the font size here, I think, no, it doesn't work like that. I haven't tried it out. Oh no, I have to change the font size of uh, HTML tag. So let's try if I change the font to 20 pixels. Yep, the uh, font size of the font size of uh, the menu also changes. So REMs uh, makes your uh, values based on the font size of the HTML element. Um, okay, now we have the <laughs> really beautiful uh, menu, but we need to style it a bit. Firstly, let's give it a line height of 1 EM. Now I'm going to play around with it just a bit to make it suit my needs. So this is the line height, no. Oh, it seems to have some margin margins in the bottom. Let's remove them. Margin bottom zero. So that's better. Also, I'm gonna add the styles for anchor tags. Text decoration none. Um, what else? Color will be well black. And well, the font family layout sensor. If uh, we need to include Google fonts, actually, so let's also do that. And how to do it? I have no idea. Uh, Google fonts. So let's see, but uh, okay, it, it seems that I have to uh, download them and then include them. But hosting your own Google Fonts local within a project means that they won't have to be fetched over the network when your site loads. Okay, yeah, it makes sense because we have all the uh, necessary resources in our project. Mm. It's okay. It's 
so let's try it out I've never done that before but the thing is um, I still don't know should I include those um, um, those parts where I play around and uh, go into the unknown uh, in the streams or should I just show you how I do things that I know and when uh, there's something I get stuck with I just uh, uh, fix the problem myself and tell you how I did it in the next stream. So you can leave some feedback how you would prefer. Uh, the, uh, installing fonts is a good example. Should I install the fonts now or should I just uh, skip that part at the moment and do it later? But uh, at the moment I'm going to do it uh, well, now. <laughs> and the font I need is Roboto. So I need to install Roboto font typeface uh, so I need to search Roboto and yes can I just typeface Roboto okay it's downloading the font at the moment and then uh, I should be able to do well just require the font let's see uh, let's go back to the okay it's still installing And then we should be able to just in layout.js be able to import it. Import typeface Roboto. I'm also going to change the double quotes, just single quotes here. Uh, let's run the project again. We should have Roboto or not. It wasn't installed. Maybe I'm missing the correct node version. Let's see. Uh, whoa, uh, Rajesh, thank you. Uh, Rajesh just said that he shared my channel on his Instagram page. Uh, can you maybe bring out what you like, what you don't like, what I should improve about my streams? Because, uh, yeah, at the moment I'm just, uh, uh, I'm in an unknown area at the moment. So, like, feedback would be really nice. So, okay, I'm, uh, I'm starting to have errors and actually, uh, I'm also running out of time, but at the moment I'm gonna mm, finish off with this stream. Uh, we got Gatsby JS working. We are still developing the header component. Um, well, we just need to add the fonts and search icon, so it's not that bad. But um, I'm gonna do it, continue that, and uh, by tomorrow we have it ready. I'm gonna show you what I did in order to fix the errors that I have on the screen at the moment and uh, yeah tomorrow we are going to continue building the page and the plan is to build the featured um, featured article part so this part here and if we have time then also latest articles but at the moment guys i'm genuinely thank you rajesh thank you for being with me in the stream and uh yeah, if you, if you like if you like the stream, please give me feedback. Uh, how to improve improve even further? Um, what I do good, what I do bad, and if there are topics you'd like to, if there are topics you'd like to learn about um, or me to cover, then please do let me know. But at the moment, guys, thank you for listening, and see you tomorrow. Bye.